Who will be the first private manned spacecraft in America to go to the International Space Station? We're about to find out. I think the United States is very much a nation of explorers. This is a new generation, a new era in human spaceflight. My heart is sitting right here, and I think it's going to stay there until we get Bob and Doug safely back. Anyone who has an adventurous bone in their body is, is going to be very excited about this. Ten, nine, eight, seven. We have a go for maintenance start. Four, three, two. Since the space shuttle was retired nearly a decade ago, and lift off. it's been a race among several aerospace companies to be chosen as NASA's next solution for a cargo ship to the International Space Station, or ISS. But now it's down to two, Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Dragon. With a scheduled launch just days away, Elon Musk's SpaceX may be the first to pull off a historic milestone. It's remarkable to think that the last time that uh, a, a crewed launch vehicle departed from the United States was 2011. And so I think it would be really quite profound to be back in the saddle again. We are going to launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. We're going to do it in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. The Falcon 9 to the space This station. is a high priority mission for the United States of America. If all goes well, a Falcon 9 rocket with a dragon on top will lift off from the same launch pad that sent the Apollo astronauts to the moon 50 years ago. Without a space shuttle alternative, We've been dependent on Russia to keep a U.S. presence on the space station. For the last nine years, we have been purchasing rides on Russian Soyuz rockets, and those costs have gone up significantly. Costs of nearly $4 billion. The International Space Station is a critical capability for the United States of America. Having access to it is also critical. There's a lot of significance to bringing these missions back to American soil. First is an alternative to the Soyuz solution that's out there. But uh, as an American, I, I'm just proud of what we'll be able to accomplish to, and fly again on an American rocket from American soil. And the mission demonstrates a remarkable role reversal for how America goes to space. And this time when we do it, we're doing it differently than we've ever done it before. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate the hardware. In fact, we're going to be a customer. With both Dragon and Starliner programs in the works, NASA has redundancy, something they depend on in all aspects of spaceflight. Even if Dragon is successful, Starliner program will continue with a test flight scheduled later this year. SpaceX has been hauling cargo on Dragon to ISS since 2012. We've flown Dragon uh, to and from the space station successfully uh, 20 times for cargo missions. They successfully completed the first test run of the all-new Crew Dragon to the ISS in 2019. Last year, we had our Demonstration 1 mission, which was the, the Crew Dragon uh, without any crew on board. Went to the space station, they opened up the hatch, and then came back home. Demo 1 marked the first time in history a spacecraft docked autonomously with the ISS. No help from the mothership. Who was in the driver's seat? A test dummy. And to test the payload capabilities, Elon Musk also sent one of his Tesla cars into space with a mannequin named Starman. With Dragon's Demo-2 mission, the stakes are much higher because human lives will be on board. This first crewed mission to ISS, Demo-2 tests a brand new spacecraft like its notable predecessors. We think about uh, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and then Space Shuttle. Those are really the four times in history when we have put humans on brand new spacecraft. 
and now we're doing it for a fifth time. The rocket that will take Crew Dragon to space is one of the most critical pieces of the mission. It follows a standard set by the Saturn V, the rocket that took Apollo astronauts to the moon, and still the most powerful rocket on the planet, releasing a whopping 7.6 million pounds of thrust at launch. The space shuttle debuted in 1981 as the world's first reusable spacecraft. It launched strapped to two rocket boosters and returned to Earth a silent glider. Crew Dragon is a free-flying spacecraft. It gets its lift into space atop a rocket, like the Apollo missions. But this time, the rocket is a SpaceX original called Falcon 9. The 23-story tall rocket delivers nearly 2 million pounds of thrust, which is plenty to get into Earth's orbit. The profile is um, somewhat different for Dragon than it is for Shuttle. You tend to pull more Gs. With Falcon 9, when we have the staging from first to second stage, you get kind of a weightlessness. Then the G profile could experience somewhere on the order of four plus Gs, whereas Shuttle, we were limited to just three Gs. Putting humans atop any rocket requires risk and an escape plan. The most complex engineering tests ever done. We actually put Dragon on top of Falcon, launch the Falcon, and then initiate the launch escape system. We demonstrated that Dragon is capable of, of carrying the crew away from uh, Falcon um, in the event of an emergency. Extensive testing and test flights covering every aspect of this mission have been going on for years. I think we have pounded the issues associated with Falcon and Dragon more than any other mission we've had in our history. We have been to the International Space Station 21 times. While the space shuttle was hardware heavy, Dragon is light and sleek. The two big differences really are the shuttle was a, a hauling truck. It could take a big payload into orbit. With crews for the space shuttle, we were doing it with some really old hardware. I think uh, laptops hadn't been invented, of course. The Dragon is a, is a smaller capsule, so a smaller crew, uh, not a lot of cargo. It'll also look a lot more modern on the inside. Now all that capability is really incorporated on board the vehicle and internalized so that it uh, does make for a, a nice clean cockpit. One of the biggest differences that you see, of course, is that you know, from a traditional cockpit designed many decades ago where you have many switches and knobs and dials, um, inside of Dragon you have these large touch screens. Crew Dragon is a 21st century spacecraft and we wanted it to to not only be as safe and reliable as you'd expect from the most advanced spacecraft in the world, but we, we also wanted to look amazing and look beautiful. I mean, spacecraft and space flight should be inspiring. After launch, the Dragon capsule will be released from the rocket into low Earth orbit. Dragon will be fully autonomous, it can carry the crew safely to the station and bring them home without direct intervention. But, of course, we want to make sure that we give the crew all the tools possible in case they need to manually pilot Dragon's flight. And lift off. The Falcon 9 rocket, like Dragon, is also designed to be reusable. This breakthrough technology sends the rocket's first stage back to Earth after launch to be used again on a future flight. SpaceX believes a reusable spaceflight system is the pivotal breakthrough needed to reduce the cost of space access. Dragon has been designed for reuse and reflight up to five times, similar to our Falcon vehicles. Um, not only do we refly Falcons for many missions, but we also refly um, Dragons already. Meanwhile, Crew Dragon in orbit begins to catch up with the ISS. It's uh, roughly 10 minutes to get to orbit. And then you start your process of chasing the uh, International Space Station. We'll do some manual flying of the vehicle, and then we will 
continue through the rendezvous phase to where we end up in front of the space station uh, the next morning, uh, ready to dock. While this mission marks a new era in human spaceflight, the two astronauts on board are veterans. Both Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley flew on NASA's space shuttle. Hurley was on the very last shuttle flight to the space station in 2011. Now they will fly on a brand new vehicle. The Dragon mission is all about technology breakthroughs, right down to the astronauts' spacesuits. The suit is, is a one-piece suit. The suits provide air, uh, oxygen supply, they maintain pressure, the right temperature. The suits also have an integrated communication system. It plugs into the seat. Sitting in your seat with your suit on, you actually plug in. The suit really is an integrated system of Dragon. Even the helmets are 3D printed. Demo 2 mission will be historic in a very different way. With an ongoing global pandemic, there will be no spectators at the launch. We are asking people to watch from home. We want to keep everybody safe. And so we're asking people not to travel to the Kennedy Space Center. That makes me sad to even say it. But we need Demo 2 to be successful. And the best way we can do that is to do it while keeping everybody safe. Ironically, the astronauts are used to quarantine. Only it's been extended from two to 10 weeks, with a bonus, family. So we're already in quarantine with our families. The pandemic itself uh, doesn't really change what we're trying to accomplish here. It will just change the experience and how people are able to share it and, and you know, absorb it as, it as it actually happens. If all goes well, Benkin and Hurley plan to spend two to three months aboard the ISS with a dramatic return home. We'll spend some time on board space station and do some docked activities with the vehicle and then just see how the vehicle performs uh, while it is docked to space station. And then at some point, uh, 30 to 90 days later, we will undock and do an entry and a landing in the uh, Atlantic off the coast of Florida. SpaceX's futuristic capsule will make an old-fashioned splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean after the two to three month stay at ISS. This will be the first time astronauts have landed in the ocean since the Apollo missions. Really excited on, uh, to be on this flight and to, to take the splashdown at the end. It was the one experience that uh, none of the original group of us as commercial crew cadre had under our belts was landing in a capsule and so we're, we're looking, looking forward to that. This race for space will open a new chapter for the U.S., but requires great risk and has not been without its serious challenges. Boeing's Starliner narrowly avoided a disaster during a 2019 unmanned flight test. The spacecraft failed to reach the space station due to a software glitch, but returned successfully to Earth. And while SpaceX has completed testing and is poised to be the first to ferry humans to space, it's had major setbacks as well. In 2019, a Dragon crew capsule burst into flames during an engine test. And in 2018, a Falcon 9 booster missed its landing pad upon re-entry and plunged into the sea. We should not lose sight of the fact that this is a test flight, that we're taking it very, very seriously from a safety perspective. And now, with public and private sector focused on a single mission, all eyes will be looking up to the stars. It takes a lot of uh, confidence to pull off a, a human spaceflight mission, but uh, you also need to be a little bit paranoid that uh, things can get complicated preparation piece has come from the NASA side and the, that audacity piece maybe has come from the SpaceX side and we've kind of merged it together. I'll feel a little relief when they're in orbit. I'll feel more relief when they get to station and then obviously I will start sleeping again when, they, uh, when they're back safely uh, on the planet. 
I think in a, in a microcosm, you're able to look down on the earth and there aren't country boundaries or the fragility of the earth. You know, I think we're all experiencing some of that as well right now with this uh, pandemic situation where that has connected us all in a way internationally that uh, causes us to reconsider our connection and, and how important it is for us to work together going forward. When STS-135 crew departed the ISS on the last shuttle flight in 2011, they left a flag for the next American mission to retrieve. This flag represents not just a symbol of our national pride and honor, but in this particular case, it represents a goal. This flag also will be flown prominently here by the forward hatch of No. 2 to be returned to Earth once again by an astronaut that launches on a U.S. vehicle, hopefully in just a few years. The race isn't over until it's over. We definitely uh, feel like we're uh, in the lead to make it to the International Space Station and uh, retrieve the flag that STS-135 uh, left behind.